you again you see increasing female arrests in the United States from 2000 to 2010. Now we return one more time to a point we made earlier that both race and gender shape the probabilities that someone will be a victim of crime and also to be a criminal offender. Here we're looking at uh, murder offenders and murder victims from 2006. What percentage of them were white, African American, or other? Here we see that about 46% of offenders, murder offenders, uh, were white, but that means that whites were underrepresented since whites made up uh, roughly 70%, uh, a little over 70% of the general population at that time, and, but made up only about 46% of the murders. On the other hand, African Americans made up 50% of those uh, convicted for murder, uh, but at the same time, uh, they made up uh, uh, roughly 12%, uh, uh, maybe 13% of the population during that time. So African Americans were overrepresented as murder, as murder uh, offenders. You see the same kind of overrepresentation, the same skewed statistic with murder victims. It's not quite as skewed, but once again, whites were underrepresented as murder victims, while African Americans were overrepresented. Of course, many people uh, were murder victims and murder offenders. Uh, they were non-white and non-African American, but clearly uh, whites and blacks constituted most of murder victims and murder offenders during that period. Now, if you look at sex of offenders and the sex of victims, the statistics are even far more skewed. That's clearly true with murder offenders. The vast majority of murderers were males close to 90%, and only 9% were females, while 2% were of unknown sex. Uh, when we look at murder victims, once again, the, the um, uh, statistics aren't quite as skewed by gender, but still close to three out of four uh, murder victims were male, only roughly one out of four, 26% were females, and 1% were of unknown gender. Now we've talked about age as well as a factor that heavily affects uh, murder statistics. Here we're going to go into that a lot more. You see people of age from age 10 all the way up to age 70. Here we're looking at UCR data from 2005. You can see that age has a strong influence on who is arrested in terms of property crimes. Property crime arrests typically peak at age 16 and drop in half by age 20. You also see a somewhat similar pattern for violent crimes. Once again, violent crimes also peak at a certain age, in this case typically around age 18, but the drop off uh, after that peak is quite a bit slower than it is uh, for uh, property crimes. Nevertheless, you see that for both violent crimes and property crimes, the peak activity in terms of arrests uh, is for young people, uh, uh, 18 or 20 years old, uh, 16 years old for property crime, I should say. And then thereafter, there's a, a, a long declining tendency for people to be arrested. That pattern is especially clear for, uh, uh, for property crimes where there's a very rapid drop off. Once again, younger people are grossly overrepresented in arrest statistics. Here we see young people aged 10 to 24, as of 2006, their share percentage of the U.S. population. And here we see the percentage of arrests by people 10 to 24. Clearly, younger people were overrepresented in terms of arrests compared to their percentage of the population. And that becomes even clearer when you look at this graph, more recent statistics showing arrests in the United States 2010, broken down by the age of the person arrested. Very young people, not very likely to be arrested. But by the time kids hit 15 to 19 years old, uh, their probability of being arrested shoots way up and peaks out in the 20 to 24 age range and is still very high in the 25 to 29 range. By the time most people hit their 30s, 40s, and 50s, however, uh, the probability of being arrested uh, really drops off, and you can see this in the, in the actual arrest statistics from a fairly recent year. Another similar, uh, uh, another similar breakdown of data from an earlier period, 2006. 
This graphic is a little difficult to read because it was originally color coded, but I can explain the basic idea and it's easy enough to interpret. Here we're looking at violent victimization rates per 1,000 people. These curves are showing different age groups and how violent victimization changed from 1970, or pardon me, 1973 to 2006. You can see for the youngest age groups here, there were huge changes during this period. For a long time, young people were uh, increasingly likely to be victims of violent crime. In fact, that's what was really driving this large increase in the overall levels of violent crime in America. But then, in the late 80s and early 90s, you see this, it peaks out and then it drops, uh, drops rapidly. In other words, young victims of violent crime uh, really are driving the rise uh, in uh, uh, violent crime rate during the 70s and 80s, and then the abrupt, massive decline in crime. That's equally explained by what's happening to young people. With older and middle-aged Americans, there wasn't nearly the level of change, and for the oldest Americans, very little change at all. In other words, crime statistics changes in crime, uh, pardon me, crime trends and patterns uh, tend to be driven by changing trends among the young, in this case showing victimizations for violent crime. Now here we have some data that is a little more recent, but it makes a very similar point. Here we have the number of persons arrested 2000 and 2009. And it's broken down by both property crime and violent crime. Let's just look at these lines here for a moment. There was a 15% decline in violent crime by those under uh, age 18. A pretty large, sizable decrease. And by the way, that was driving down overall violent crime rates in the entire United States. The decrease in uh, violent crime arrests for people who were 18 and older, however, was only a 5% decline. So the thing that was really consistently driving down violent crime rates in the United States during the 2000s was mostly occurring among the young, not so much among older or middle-aged Americans. For that matter, not even so much among younger adults. We see an even stronger effect with property crime. Among younger people aged 18 or below, a 20% and more decline, 20.3% decline in arrests for property crime, a huge decrease. On the other hand, for those 18 and older, there was an offsetting 21%, 21.1% increase. But once again, this effect was dominant. Most property crimes are committed by young people to begin with. So a 20% decline in that very large number of crimes and arrests by the young really has a huge impact. And that more than offsets a 20% increase in the much smaller number of arrests for people who are 18 and older. So the punchline is, is property crime rates changed uh, you know, the decrease in property crime rate, once again, was driven primarily by uh, changes in arrests by the young. Now, this table here allows us to uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, summarize and uh, uh, kind of remind us about some of the basic arguments we've made to this point. We're looking at both violent crime and property crime data from 2006, looking at arrest, uh, in this case, I'm sorry, victimization uh, 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 statistics you can see that males are more likely to be victims of violent crime compared to females. We don't have corresponding data for property crimes, but we would also see a similar pattern there. By the way, the reason that the numbers are as close as they are is that females are much more likely to be victims of violent sexual crimes than men. But for non-sexual crimes, men are much more likely to be victims. Even if you include sexual crimes in these violent crimes, crimes such as rape, men still are more likely to be victims of crime. We've talked about the effect of age, and you can see it here where younger people are much more likely to be victims of violent crime than older people, and that's most clear for those 65 or older who rarely are victims of violent crime. Again, we're missing key data for property uh, crimes, but uh, again, you would see somewhat similar patterns, although the patterns would be weaker for property crime. 
We see large differences in terms of victimization across racial groups, white, African Americans, and other races. And we see substantial differences in how likely they are to be victims of property crime as well. Likewise, we see differences between ethnic, uh, ethnic groups, Latinos being more likely than non-Latinos to be victims of violent crime, and also much more likely to be victims of property crime than non-Latinos. Here's something that we haven't mentioned, the effect of family income. Social class affects your likelihood of being arrested for crimes and being victims of crime. Here we're looking at statistics again for being a victim of crime. And you'll see that people with very low incomes tend to be significantly more likely to be victims of violent crime compared to those with higher levels of income. You see a similar pattern for property crimes. It's not quite as pronounced. Generally, there still is a tendency as your income goes up, as you move down this chart, your income going up, uh, the uh, 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 percentage of uh, populations of people within those incomes uh, uh, brackets tends to fall. However, once you begin to get much higher income, $75,000 or more, um, the uh, a number of the, uh, victimization rates for property re uh, crimes tends to go up a little bit. So there's kind of that uh, hooking up, that increase as incomes go up quite a bit. Again, with violent crimes, this trend, uh, this pattern is much more obvious, and you can see it in this graph showing violent crime victimization rates across different income groups. The lowest income having uh, the lowest income groups having the highest number of people being victims of violent crime, much higher than people uh, who have higher incomes. Now that pretty much concludes all we're going to talk about in terms of race, ethnicity, gender, and related things. But we are going to talk just a little more in our next video uh, about some other crime trends and patterns. Trends and patterns in terms of the geography in cr of crime, the um, temporal patterns of crime, how crime changes across season and hours of the day. We'll catch that in our next video. Thank you.